Today, our country is facing some serious challenge like security, drought, pirate, and political turmoil. But we have another major challenge that we are facing today, and it's unemployment. To be unemployed or to be a jobless is a really stressful and sleepless, and, and sleepless night. Five years ago, uh, I graduated high school and I was unemployed. I was a jobless. Then I couldn't find a job. I look, I look a job, then I couldn't find. Then I decided to leave this country, to immigrate. But to leave to where? I decided to go to Yemen, one of the poorest nations in the Arab world. In summer 2009, I hit the road to Yemen to immigrate. So I took a dangerous journey, a serious risk. I arrived in Bosaso. I wanted to cross that, that sea, Gulf of Aden, to reach Yemen, to get a job and to leave that place. So when I arrived in Bosaso, I met a group of Somali smugglers that they take the people from Bosaso to Yemen. And they're using this boat, very dangerous. I negotiated with them. Then we finally agreed that I'm going to pay $70 and then they will take me to Yemen. Then at the night, they take me to the beach. Then I enter the boat. Not this boat exactly, but something like this. So, a few hours in the sea, we lost the direction. Then one one of the passengers told us that we are heading to the wrong direction. It's like five hours. So we came back and he said, this is the right direction. This is Yemen. So let's go to this direction. So we went that direction again. And the second time, we realized that we are not the right direction. We came back again. Then finally, we get the right direction. Thank God, after six hours, we arrived the coast or the beach of Yemen. Then some group, some people that that they were living in the, in the beach. They welcome us and they take to us to the camp, to the refugee camp, which is called Al Qaras. Al Qaras refugee camp. When I stayed for three hours in the camp, and you know, the, the weather in the Middle East is very hot. So I couldn't stay. Then I said, I cannot stay because the temperature was very high. So I decided to leave and to, and to go to Sana'a, to the capital city. Then I met another group of smugglers that they are taking the people to other major cities. Then finally, I arrived in Sana'a. Then I stayed for a few days. Then I realized it. Yemen is a very poor country, so I cannot stay. So I decide to keep my journey to go to Saudi Arabia, the richest country in the Arab world. I meet another smugglers that they are taking the people to Saudi Arabia. 
So they took to me to the border of Saudi Arabia. Then when we arrived there, they told me that's Saudi Arabia. So cross the border. They told me that not to cross during the day. This is the border between Yemen and Saudi Arabia. So I waited until the night time to cross the border, then to go to Saudi Arabia. I crossed finally. I was working in a supermarket as a cleaner. Then I was living in the supermarket. I was staying in the supermarket and I was working doubles. Few weeks later, I tried to go out in order to take a fresh air to see how Saudi Arabia looked like. Then I went out, but unfortunately, the police catch me. And I thought that they're going to deport me back to Somalia. But they didn't. They deported me to Yemen because it was much easier for them. I was close to the border. Then when they deported me to Yemen, they threw me at the border. Then they told me not to come back. Then immediately, I turned my face to Saudi Arabia. Because then I tried to cross the border. I waited until the night time. Then I couldn't. The next day, I said, I give up. I'm going back to home. This is enough. So I came back to Sana'a. When I came to Sana'a, I called my father. At that time, he was living in Somalia. So I said that I give up. I want to come back home. So I said, I need some money. Then he said, no. You left the country without my permission. So he said, I'm not going to help you. Live your own life. Then I said, it's OK. I will manage my life. Then I stayed in Sana'a, I got a job in a shopping mall. When I was working in a, for one month, then one evening, my father called me. Then he said, hello, boy. How is life with you? Then I said, not good, really. I think that call was the most important call I have ever received in my life. That call. has changed my life. He said, you left the country because you were seeking better life, you were seeking jobs. So he said, he told me, when you are jobless, when you are unemployed, go to college, invest education. That will, will be back tomorrow when you graduated. I said, good idea. When he told me to look a college that I can study, then he, then he told me that he will help me. Then I said, thank you, Dad. Then I started looking at college. Then I found one, one nice college. So I called back my father. Then I said, I found a college. So I need my certificate, my documents for high school so that I can join that college. Then he said, he will send me through DHL. And he sent it through DHL. After one week, I went to the DHL. Then I said, I need my papers. I need my documents, my package. And they said, what's your name? I told them my name. Then they said, you have to bring your ident identification documents. And I was not having any documents because I was staying in Yemen as illegal refugee. Then I decided to go back to the camp, Al Qaras refugee camp, where I stayed before, in order to register 
and to get the documents to become a legal legal refugee so I went to the camp and I register it and they give me an ID card that says Sadak is a refugee in Yemen I came back to the DHL then I show them my ID my identification card then they give me my package then I started my college and I was majoring in international business. Finally, after four years, I graduated. <laughs> I aimed. After working hard, I graduated and I get my first degree in the college. Last year, when I graduated, I decided to come back home and to help my people. When I came back home, everyone was very happy, especially my family. Then my father, he said, he, the day I come, welcome home. Then he was calling to his friends. Then he was saying, my son is a graduate. He has a degree, so he's looking a job. Then he said, we need a job. He was like making a connection. So he told me to write a resume, an application letter, to seek a job. Then I said, listen dad, I went to a college in order to create a job, not to seek a job. <laughs> I studied four years in a college to help the youth, to create a job, to create opportunities. Not someone will hire me. And the reason I say was that because I left this country, I immigrate, I take a risk because I was a jobless. So if I don't create a job, the other youth will take the risk that I took it. They will suffer the way I suffer it. So on July this year, I started my own business with the help of my friends. I opened a diagnostic center. It's called Bahnano Diagnostic Center. And it's the first diagnostic center in Mogadishu. We serve for the hospitals and the clinics. And now I hire it. 15 people. I feel like I say 15 people that they were thinking or imagining one day to immigrate, to take a risk. Mogadishu is rising now and we will fight the unemployment. We will help our youth. We will reduce the unemployment by creating more jobs by bringing ideas. Thank you very much.